The new EU tyre label will be compulsory as of November 2012. The effects will become apparent at the latest when your vehicle needs new tyres, like our Tina tyre here. What awaits us when we enter a tyre retailer? We can see right away if the tyres differ in three key tyre criteria. This is made easy by the colour scales and the value representing the so-called passing noise, and yet it can still be quite confusing at first. Tina is already partially familiar with the system used for refrigerators. The more energy-efficient a refrigerator is, the greener the graphic. But she has no idea what all this means when it comes to tyres. The tyre retailer explains to Tina the information shown on the new EU tyre label and what performance characteristics it addresses. The label focuses on three key characteristics of a tyre. Energy efficiency, tyre grip on wet roads and the intensity of the passing noise. For the first two criteria, A is the best mark. For passing noise, the absolute value is given in decibels. This makes sense for the consumer and provides an instant overview. Of course, Tina also wants to know exactly what the individual points mean. The question is, what impact do the individual points have? The tyre retailer is happy to explain everything to Tina at the information corner. First of all, they look at the energy efficiency of the tyre or the influence on the vehicle's fuel consumption. Reducing the rolling resistance always saves fuel and with it CO2 emissions. What difference does a B tyre make compared with a C tyre? Let's put it to the test. The test begins in Hanover. A tyre from fuel category C uses almost 0.12 more litres of fuel over a distance of 100 kilometres or 62 miles than a tyre from category B. The tyre retailer has Tina travel right through Germany, through Switzerland and down to northern Italy. The journey ends in Milan after 1,000 kilometres, that's around 620 miles. It's true, the C tyre has now used over 1.2 litres of fuel more than a tyre from class B. And the calculations can continue in the same way. A tyre from class E uses around 2.4 litres more fuel over the same distance than a tyre from class B. D has not been given a value. So the issue of fuel is cleared up. What about braking distance on wet roads? The tyre retailer and Tina take a closer look. A car with tyres in braking distance class A stops in the shortest time from a speed of 80 km per hour, that's 50 miles per hour. Class C tyres need another 4 metres to come to a standstill. And the same applies to classes E and F with another 5 and 6 metres to come to a standstill. D and G have not been given a value. In concrete terms, this means there is a difference of up to 18 metres between the braking distance for class A and class F. Let's take a closer look again. The vehicle with category A tyres comes to a stop the fastest. At this point, the vehicle with the category B tyres is still travelling at 25 km per hour. That's around 15 miles per hour. The vehicle with the category C tyres is still travelling at 34 km per hour. That's just over 20 miles per hour. The vehicle with the category E tyres passes at 42 km per hour. That's just over 25 miles per hour. While the vehicle with the category F tyres passes the original point at 49 km per hour. That's just over 30 miles per hour. Now for the final point. Noise levels. Tina learns that there are three classes that characterize the external noise of a tire. The different noise symbols on the label show the absolute decibel values. Tina now has all the information she needs about the label. However, the tire specialist explains a little more. And his conclusion is clear. In order to obtain a full understanding about all performance aspects of a tire then, Tina should look at an independent tyre test as it examines absolutely all factors key to objectively judging a tyre. That's why it's so important to take an all-round look at a tyre. Factors like its aquaplaning performance, dry braking, dry handling and handling on a wet surface also play a decisive role in recognising a good tyre. Also, what about winter tyres? Important criteria are missing. Start up on snow. Does it slip when travelling uphill on snow? What is its braking performance on snow and ice? How good is handling in general at temperatures below 7 degrees Celsius? Both parties agree. Whilst the label provides a good overview, 
It cannot replace a consultation with a specialist tyre retailer. Thank you.